All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Bernie. I'm president of Titan Power. And uh, we're out of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And Tom Rutledge is our field engineer. And I'll introduce Tom um, at the, at the uh, site where the UPS is at. Um, we're a 7x24 maintenance company. We're also a general contractor, so we provide and install um, UPSs and equipment. And then we do maintenance contracts, repair and maintenance on equipment. So we, uh, we actually did the startup of these two systems. And today we're going to kind of go over um, a one-line drawing of the UPS and its systems that, that it's attached to. And then we'll, go on, then we'll go through a block diagram of the UPS real quickly so you kind of understand the inverter, rectifier, and what they are. And then once we finish that, we'll head over to the, the equipment room, and then we'll go through the UPS control cabinet and how they operate, how to go through menus, and um, a little bit of maintenance on, on the system. And then we'll conclude with any questions. So first of all, we'd like to go through the, the one-line diagram. And it's a pretty simple diagram. Um, we can get a good picture of that there, and then I'll go ahead and take it down. Um, the block diagram is simply to, to get you to, up to speed as far as where the UPS fits in the system. You've got main power coming in, an ATS, and the generator is just sitting just west of the UPS room, I believe. Then you've got emergency power distribution panel. Then the two PSs are, tie, are tied to that panel input. They feed the system control panel. Now that emergency distribution also feeds a maintenance bypass. The UPS feeds that, and then th through two breakers, one on, one off, the UPS is fed to the load. So this way, with a maintenance bypass, we can wrap around that and uh, bypass the UPS completely, as shown in the diagram here, and do some maintenance. So it's, the, the load would be supported by commercial power. Now, the UPS is there, and the batteries are, are not shown, but the UPS is, is supported by batteries. So during the transfer on the ATS at the top of the page from main um, AC input power to generator, there's going to be a power outage and a time for that to transfer. Um, the UPS will support the load during that with its batteries until the generator comes up to voltage and frequency and then back again the same way. So the UPS batteries will be utilized both times during the initial power outage and the return from generator to commercial power. Okay, let's, uh, let's, I'm going to hand out a, a, any questions on that at all as far as how it's operated. Okay, and that just gets on the same page depending on, on where you're coming in here as far as knowledge goes. Now, this is a block diagram of the internal workings of a UPS, and I don't know if you can get a, a close-up on that just to give a picture of it. All right? And mainly what I want to focus in on is you see the rectifier that's the UPS input. The UPS is taking the rectifier AC voltage, changing it to DC, and that next dot there is, we call that the DC bus. Now that DC bus is tied to the rectifier inverter and its batteries. So the DC bus does two things. It, it's, it's, a, it's the DC bus of the UPS and it feeds the inverter and it charges the batteries at this point during normal operation. So the batteries are just kind of hanging out there in a float charge really not doing anything other than just filtering that DC bus, keeping it nice and clean. Then the inverter takes that DC bus, converts it back to AC, and feeds the load. So during a power outage, the rectifier is, is no longer functioning. It's out of the system. The battery current will flow into the, into the inverter and out to the load. So the current's going the opposite direction now. Instead of charging current, we're feeding um, inverter current as much as the inverter will need and to support the load until the batteries run out. And then hopefully the generator kicks in, the rectifier comes back on, and we start charging again. What time were they looking at for battery, battery batteries? Um, I think it was spec'd out at, um, I, I think, 11 or 15 minutes of runtime at full load. Yeah. And that would be at, at, at 600 um, <clears throat> kW per module is what it's designed for at, at about 15 to 20 so minutes. So they're going to so. try to maintain 15 minutes under, under backup. Yeah, if, if one module failed and you have one, 16, one 600 kW UPS fully loaded, it'll last 11 to 15 minutes. I think the spec was, it over-tested for whatever the spec was. They got an extra minute of runtime out of the, out of the batteries. And I wasn't involved with the spec, so I'm not, I, somebody could probably answer that for me. The tests that were done were done by Tesla, and you guys should have all that information yeah, and yeah. findings from Tesla. So, so... Yeah, so I'm not sure what the actual spec was, but it, I, I know that we were there doing the test, and, and the batteries exceeded the, the, the specs of the, uh, of the, of the runtime requirements. Now, with both UPSs running, 
you double your runtime because it's 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 um, 1600 kW is the max you can put out, put out of this entire system, or you're not M plus one anymore. So you get double the runtime as long as both systems are running, and that's some reaction time. That's time to say, look, what's wrong with the generator? Battery in the generator needs to be good for it to start. So that gives you some reaction time to get that generator up and running. Drive a car up there and get your jumper cables out or something. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Three or four cars, maybe. But so that the batteries are there for reaction for, for, for reaction time. So you have some time to, to figure out what's going on, what's going wrong. So you should have a probably 30 minutes plus if both the UPS modules are running, depending on the load. Okay. So any question on the block diagram as far as the, the rectifier inverter and where the batteries are hooking the system. So some people think the, the UPS is running on battery. No, it's running on commercial power, converting it to DC bus and just feeding itself. And the batteries are just there on charge just in case the power fails. Okay. Now we, we have um, the lesson plan and there's not a whole lot to go over here in the room, but, but I'll, I, I, do they have copies of this? Okay, so you can turn to your lesson plan in there. And um, basically, we're going to head over to, um, and I'll just kind of review it real quick and see if you have any questions now, and then we can head over to the, to the room. Uh, the basic system design, operation, requirements, and criteria. Um, documentation you have. This is a Liebert 610. Uh, it's going to be the UPS power supply, and we'll go over one, and that's for both systems, identical. We'll look at the system control cabinet. Then we'll talk a little bit about what facilities need to do as far as troubleshooting and maintenance, and then any repairs are required. And then for emergencies, um, for instance, our number, 800-509-6170, uh, and it's in the manual there. Um, we're manned 24 hours a day, um, 365 days a year. Technical questions, emergency dispatch or repair, whatever you guys need. So um, that's a resource for you if you need, if you need help on the, on, on the system. Uh, one of the things that we, we, we will go over when we're in the room too, but there's nothing you can do external as you walk up to the UPS to make it work any better. You can't push a button, you can't close a breaker, you can't change the state to make it work any better than it is. UPS is designed to function and do whatever it can to support the load. So it's going to take commercial power, generator power, or battery power to support that load for as long as it can with whatever, whatever input source there is. And there's not much you can do other than close a breaker and provide power back to the UPS. Um, and so my, my advice is don't go up and push buttons on the UPS. There's nothing you can do to make it work any better. Um, some of the stuff we'll talk about as far as maintenance goes is pretty basic. Um, and that's really for the classroom to kind of set the stage. So that's, not, that's, that's pretty much all we have. Any questions about, about the system before we head back over? Okay. Nothing? All righty, very good. And then uh, we'll head over there. Thomas, um, we'll introduce him when we get over there, and we'll go through the, uh, the UPS menus, talk a little bit about how to, how to bring up alarm, um, bring up um, operation menus, and the same thing with the